name Agrippa means a wild horse tamer. King Agrippa means that he was one that was equal to the task of breaking people's will. Paul looked at King Agrippa and said, I understand that you have the ability to break people's will, but I want you to understand that I know my power as an individual, and I think myself happy. The word think means I command myself to be happy. It means my happiness or my joy is not tied to my circumstances. It means it's tied to the choice of my will. That's why when you understand this, now you understand why God will not accept your justification of your circumstances being your reason for being miserable. Because what you will learn about people is folk are miserable in mansions while others are happy in garages. That's up to you. That's your choice. That's your ability to select. Even those, if you look at people that have risen to great prominence in our land, people that have started organizations, people that have reached out and helped people and made impacts, what you will many times find out is they have a crisis of their own. They will tell you that they many times found themselves in self-pity and in depression. Mothers who have lost children, people that were in mourning because of loved ones, Soon they began to reach out and they discovered that others were in the same kind of conditions. And they made a choice to get up and stop feeling sorry for themselves. And stop using this as an excuse to do nothing, but use it as a weapon now to help other people. Uh, tell your neighbor you have a choice. Give somebody a high five and tell them I'm going to exercise my choice. I have power to choose. I've got power to lift my hands. I have power to open up my mouth. I have power to decide that this is not going to depress me. I have power to decide that this is not going to take me down. Or I have power to sit there and suck my thumb and get into self-pity and let the violence play softly in the background and go through the reasons of why my life is so horrible and how I wish I was dead. Or I have power to look at the same thing and say that that which is meant to destroy me, I'm going to make it develop me. I want to somebody know how to use the power of choice. Lift your hands a moment and give God some glory in this house with you. Come on, open up your mouth and give him some praise and some glory in this house. Sharing the testimony even earlier this week, but I feel of the Lord to reiterate because a few years ago, not actually a couple of years ago, I was at a church for an entire month. And as I've mentioned, I was doing 12 to 15 hours a day of ministry every day for three weeks without a break. And even when I was not ministering, amen, per in person, I was still getting calls internationally and other places, people in crisis and ministering on these things. Not to mention having your own needs and your own things that are going on simultaneously. Well, it, towards the end of that three week period, in a consistent giving out, a consistent flow, consistent ministry. All of a sudden, I found myself, as I was getting ready to go to bed, that a depression started to come upon me. A feeling of self-pity of, you've helped everybody else, you've ministered to people, you've given, now what do you got? And I started to feel that thing sink into my spirit but the power of choice was still present. And all of a sudden, the God within me stood up and said, wait a minute. Beep, 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 back this truck up, hold up. What are you doing stepping up into the bedroom of royalty? How dare you try to step up to where I am and depress
trust me. Obviously, you don't know me, so let me introduce myself. I'm a king's kid. You don't roll up on me like that and try to tell me what my life is. I have the power of choice, and I choose to have joy. I choose to have peace. I choose to recognize that I am blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, and I lay my head down to rest, I am Somebody, if you believe it, shout, I am blessed. God gave us something that he did not give demons. God gave us something that he did not give angels. God will allow you to choose to go to hell. He won't stop you. You can choose to be miserable right in the presence of God and he'll leave you alone. You can choose to ignore God and he won't bother you. You can choose that you decide that you don't think God cares about you no matter how much love he reaches for you. And you can choose to stay in that place of self-pity and God will let you stay there. Or you can choose to lift up your hands like a child does and look at God and say, pick me up. Pick me up, Jesus. Pick me up out of this depression. Pick me up out of this loneliness because I don't want to stay here no more. I choose to get out. Somebody shout hallelujah. The story is told of a man that was being horribly treated by the village that he was in. Misinterpreted to be a witch or a warlock, wrongly labeled, he was thrown into a pit to suffer. In order to increase his suffering, they would take the garbage of the village and throw it down into the pit. The man recognizing what was happening made someone say, a choice. The garbage fell all over his head and all around his body. He decided to shake the garbage off and step on it, and he realized he was just a little bit higher. Soon as more garbage kept being thrown down, that's what he would do. Shake it off, step on it, pile it up, and he found out he was a little bit higher. Soon enough garbage had been poured into the pit that now it allowed him to crawl outside of the pit. Because garbage is being poured on you does not mean you have to become trashy. You better make a choice. Make a choice to put that thing under your feet and decide that I'm coming out of this thing. Tell somebody I'm coming out. It is the power of a choice. It is here in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and let us take a look at it at this time again, that God speaks to Israel. God says to Israel, I'm calling heaven and earth to record. Now you must understand the language in which God is talking. Someone say, the language of covenant. This is the language of covenant. Covenant takes three things to manifest itself. And one of the things that covenant must have is witnesses. That's why at marriage, marriage is a covenant. That's why legally you must have witnesses even though you have a minister. The minister cannot be counted as a witness. You must have two to three witnesses to legally become married. So God is calling them into covenant. He calls heaven and earth, two witnesses to say, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessings and curses. He said, now just in case you're a little foggy on what to choose, let me help you out. Choose life that you might live. Stop choosing death. Stop choosing self-pity. Stop choosing depression. Stop going over what's wrong with your life and what you don't have. And how you wish you had what they have. And look at what you do have and start to thank me for what you possess. Where you may lack in another area, I bless you in some other way.